and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking you through my entire autumn winter coat collection. Now, when it comes to the jackets in my wardrobe, I have a pretty healthy collection as is, and I think that technically includes blazers and things like that, but I have a few jacket centric videos in the works where I will separately share my blazer collection. For the purposes of today, I'm just going to be focusing on the big guns, as in the warmer jackets in my collection. Now, you might be looking at this rack and thinking, wow, oh, she must live in a really cold climate, like European maybe, or somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere. But that accent, it's like really confusing me. Isn't she like from Australia? Well, yeah, I, I am from Australia and I, and I live here. I, I live in Sydney, a humid subtropical climate. But I love me a winter outfit. So yes, I'll be the first to admit that my wardrobe is disproportionately catered to the winter time. Over half of my wardrobe comprises of autumn winter stuff and realistically we're only really looking at dressing for proper autumn winter weather for about four months of the year. But I have to say that most Australians, unless you're from Victoria and maybe further south of Victoria, we really aren't equipped for the winter. We've totally acclimatised to our crazy hot summers that as soon as the weather drops under 20 degrees, bam, that's coat weather. 18 degrees, whip that scarf out. 15 degrees, you better wear a beanie in your earmuffs, otherwise you're going to get a cold. And on occasion, the weather does drop into the single digits during the dead of winter and our homes are not made for the cold. So there's no central heating in most homes and all we do is just cry. <laughs> we don't know how to deal. And so while I live in a humid subtropical climate, these coats are all put to very good use. And if you know me, as in like, know me, know me, but if you've been reading my blog for a while, then I've made it no secret that dressing for the autumn winter is my favorite. I think that the cold weather presents more opportunities to put that personal style on display for the world. You can play around with shapes and colors and proportions, particularly with all the layers that you're wearing, whereas spring summer doesn't really lend to that. So I'm certainly more so on team cover up than I am on team show some skin. Now I realize I have a substantial number of coats behind me and I don't need this number of coats. You don't need this many coats, but I have a substantial collection because of what I do. I've been running my blog now for four years and so I get sent a few. I keep my favorites alongside the ones that I have purchased as well, hence building up this really amazing coat collection. So the way in which I thought that I would tackle this and share with you all of my coats is that I would start with the longer dressy coat styles, work my way back into the more casual items and the shorter jackets that I've got as well so that you'll be able to see all of the coats that I've got in some sort of organized fashion. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Virginia. I'm relatively new on the YouTube space too, but I've been making videos about workwear, neutral style, and handbags. And for the past four years, I've been running my blog, whatvwar.com, where I share the same sort of stuff. By day, I work as a lawyer full time, and after hours, this is my passion project. So, let the jackets begin. modern coat from The Curated. Now the plan is to have a dedicated video about all of my coats from The Curated because I do have a fair few from the brand and I get a lot of questions about the different styles, the different cuts and the fabric. So I'm just going to do a quick run through for the purposes of getting through all of this today, but a more in-depth video will be coming soon. So the modern coat is just a collarless style. The color is a light khaki melange, but it is more of an off-white or warm cream tone. And this is the coat that I predominantly wear to work or in dressier looks, just because it's got such a minimal aesthetic. I really love this one. The composition is really luxurious. It's 70% wool, 30% cashmere. So it's really quite soft and it's got a belt here so I can sort of change up how I like to wear the look. This one looks great sort of styled with light neutrals but it also works when I'm wearing something black underneath because it's just one of those really easy shades to style. which is also from the curated is the curated tailored style coat in camel 
This one has the same fabric composition as the first coat that I showed you, 70% wool and 30% cashmere. So it's a really luxe blend. It feels really quite soft. And this is also a coat that I predominantly wear to work or in dressier looks because it's a much dressier cut. This one has sort of the slip pockets, more of an A-line cut, and it comes with a removable belt so you can choose to wear it with or without. And this one is without a doubt one of my favorite coats in my collection. It is definitely in my top three. So the next coat that I have to share with you is this one here by Totem, and this is their signature Annecy coat. So if you're familiar with the brand, then I'm sure you've seen this style jacket floating around on the internet somewhere. But this Annecy cut is a wrap style. When worn open, it just has this waterfall neckline. There's no closure, but you can belt it with your own belt if you do want to wear it closed, which is what I typically do. Otherwise, it still looks pretty chic when worn open. The fabric composition of the Totem coats is 90% wool and 10% cashmere, and they do have a premium price. And another thing to note as well is that Totem coats generally run quite large. If you like the oversized aesthetic, then this will definitely be your cup of tea. But if you're after more of a fitted coat, then Totem is probably not going to deliver. I managed to nab this one secondhand. This is one of the seasonal colours that was released either last year or the year before and I was going to buy it on net porter and then I saw it on Vestia in my size at a significant discount because I think someone bought it and missed the returns window. So I snapped it up. I couldn't believe it and I was the lucky recipient of their tardiness with returning the coat. This was the second Annecy coat that I added to my wardrobe. It was sparked by my first Annecy coat here that I bought new. I'll introduce that to you later in due course. So I was really pleased to get this one and I really feel like it was meant to be because of the circumstances in which I bought it. The next style coat that I have to share with you is this oversized coat from H&M. And this style is really similar to the Acme Studios Cocoon Coat. This is from their premium collection and it is up there as one of my best outerwear buys. I am so pleased that I got this one. I think I paid about 130 Australian dollars for it and the colour is beautiful, it's exceptionally well made and every time I wear it I get a heap of questions as to where it was from and people always get a surprise when I say that I got it from H&M. Now I went to the effort of actually getting the arms shortened at the tailor so that it fits my body properly and I think that it makes a world of difference because when you've got an oversized coat with really long flappy arms then it's going to look a little bit strange but because it looks like it was made for me it just looks so elevated and so premium. I remember I even bought this in the height of summer because of the opposite seasons that we have from all of you in the northern hemisphere and so we always get all of the coats that are stocked in your current winter in the height of our summer and so I think people at the office thought I was a bit mad for coming back from my lunch break with a new coat but I always recommend checking out the H&M premium collection for coats in the height of summer if you are based in Australia because that's where you find the best ones. Now I have to say that this coat is quite heavy in comparison to the other coats that I have in my collection because it's more of the traditional wool blend coats as opposed to like the double-faced merino wool cashmere coats that I have. So if you like more of a weighty coat then wool blend coats will be your thing but if you like something a little bit lighter but still warm then you should go for like a double-faced wool cashmere blend. is another one here from The Curated and this is one that I bought from their most recent archive sale. Haven't yet worn it, it's still got the tags on it and everything but I really love the forest green colour that they have and when this was available on the site I nabbed it. I think I nabbed it about 30% off in my size which is an extra small. This is the same cut as my tailored coat in the camel here that I've got so it's a cut that I've tried and tested and I really like and this one here has a different fabric composition. This one is 90% wool and 10% cashmere as opposed to my camel coat which is 70% wool and 30% cashmere and it is a noticeable difference but it still feels really soft and really premium and I'm really looking forward to wearing this one this Winter. 
the next coat that I have to share is another coat from the Curated. This is the last one that I have to share from the brand on this rack. And this is the London coat in navy. I have this in the extra small size and it is a lovely oversized double-breasted style jacket. The navy is a true rich navy and it is a beautiful 70% wool, 30% cashmere blend, meaning it's one of their softest coats. This one also comes with a belt which you can wear with the coat and it completely changes the silhouette particularly when the coat is quite oversized and the ability to cinch it in means that you can achieve two completely different looks it looks much dressier with a belt and it looks obviously a lot more relaxed when you're just wearing it loose The next style coat that I have to share with you is this beauty here from Totem and this is the very first Totem coat that I added to my collection. So it's that same Annecy style that I also have in the chocolate brown and I bought this one new from Netta Porter and this has to be one of my favourite coats. I really love the houndstooth. It's so easy to style. And I previously had the Nanushka Alamo coat in my wardrobe, also in a houndstooth. But when I bought this one, I just reached for this one so much more. And so I ended up selling my Nanushka coat. But I find that the Totem Annecy cut, it's much more flattering if you're petite in comparison to the Nanushka Alamo cut, which is a little bit longer and a little bit more oversized even in the smaller size this one has been such a good addition i dress it up i dress it down it just goes with everything it's really quite lightweight as well because it's that double faced fabric and it is 90 percent wool 10 percent cashmere so it's not as premium as some of the fabrications that you'll find in the curated coats but it is still really quite soft the texture though is not as soft as the coats that i have that are made of that 30 percent cashmere this one also packs and travels quite well. You can just sort of fold it up into your suitcase and once you arrive, all you have to do is just sort of let it hang for a couple of hours and then all the creases just sort of come out. It's really good. I really, really love this thing and I'm so glad that I have it. I get a heap of questions about this coat as well. People always ask where I got it from and unfortunately it was a seasonal print but I will link the current season style down for you below. So moving on to the next category of coats where we have trenches, windbreakers, sort of more wet weather appropriate coats. The first one that I have to share with you from that category is this oversized matte coat here and it's from Everlane. Now the oversized matte coat is oversized and so I size down to this one in the extra extra small and it fits me really well. The arms are still oversized, there's still enough room underneath to layer. It's a really great practical piece, but it also looks really clean and really minimal and stylish. I really love the stone colour in this one. It gives me Inspector Gadget vibes and I'm here for it. Inspector Gadget. This is really stylish with a dress and also with long pants. And this is the jacket that I will reach for when it's still sort of mild winter weather where I'll wear a knit and I'll just throw this on over the top just to give me that extra layer of warmth. I have that same matte coat in the camel colour as well, so I've got one in the warm tone and the cool tone, as I find it gives me variety when I'm styling different looks. And this camel tone here is really easy to pair, it's a really rich toned brown. And again, that oversized cut, really of the moment, but really minimal and quite chic. The next jacket in the trench slash MAC category is this draped trench coat here from Everlane. And this isn't a traditional trench coat in the sense that it's made of like that waterproof fabric. This is more an ode to a trench in that it's cut like one, it's got more of a draped oversized cut but the fabric is softer and it isn't waterproof. So as a result you get a softer jacket that's a little bit more drapey, a little bit more flowy and looks a lot dressier. This one here is in a lighter bone colour which I really like wearing over sort of my lighter dresses or a lighter outfit. It really complements my outfit and it's the ultimate autumn outerwear piece. Now for a more traditional trench coat. And this next piece that I have is a trench coat from Uniqlo. So this is my very first trench coat. Probably picked it up about four or five years ago. And 
even back then I had my heart set on buying myself a Burberry trench coat but I bought this as sort of like a stopgap measure but I found that since having this the motivation to get the real deal has just gone away it does come back I've got to say because it's always been on my wish list but this thing was about $120 and it looks just as stylish it's got that same waterproof fabric and it really just does the job of a traditional trench it's got all the classic trimmings as well. I think that's what you need to look for, particularly if you're looking for a trench on the high street. Make sure it looks as traditional as possible and not too trendy because then you will get so much wear out of it. You can't even tell this thing is five years old. It looks amazing and it's got all the details that you would expect from a trench. And the next trench coat that I have is probably my favorite trench coat in my tie collection. And this is one from Marks and Spencer. Again, amazing value for money and a proper trench coat made from this water resistant fabric. All of the trimmings and all of the details that you would expect of a trench coat. And having this one and my Uniqlo one has really just taken away the motivation to get myself the real Burberry style. This one I've managed to get a lot of wear from, particularly for work. And I've had it for a couple of years now. And I know that I've managed to convince quite a few of you to pick this one up. And all the feedback that I've received is glowing. Everyone loves this coat. Everyone that has it loves it. And this to me is one of the best high street finds. Just taken a break and had some lunch and now I'm back with more coats. <laughs> The next style coat that I have to share with you is one that is the same style as one that I've previously shown, but in a different color. This is the Everlane Drape Trench Coat, but in a charcoal color, which provides a bit of a contrast to the bone color that I shared with you previously. And it completes the color palette of trench coats that I have in my collection. So I've pretty much got a neutral colored trench coat to go with whatever outfit that I'm wearing in my wardrobe, and I can chop and change them quite easily. Like I mentioned earlier, this one's more of a fashion-y coat and not so much a practical trench coat because it's not made of a water resistant fabric but it's a trade-off for a more flowy feminine style jacket and the final trench that I have to share with you is this oversized trench coat by Van Roy this is a black trench coat and the only black one that I have in my collection at the moment again it's a classic trench coat with all of the trimmings that you'd expect it's really quite oversized when worn loose but it's got the belt there so you can cinch your waist in and have a little bit more of a feminine silhouette now we move on to the next category of coats, and that is the short coatish jackets. That's what we're going to call it. I have three styles to share with you in this category. The first one is this pea coat from Reese. I have a real thing for Reese coats. I really love the styles. I think they're really sophisticated. Reese coats are quite expensive for what they are. And when you do buy from Reese online, it's not shipped with delivery duties paid. And so sometimes you're hit with a tax bill at the end of that. I like to buy my Reese from Selfridges because all of the duties are taken care of at checkout. And so you don't have to worry about that sort of stuff. But of course, Selfridges doesn't have the full range as Reese online. So that's just my little Reese hack there, particularly if you're shopping from Australia. Now Reese coats are really structured and they're typically made of a wool blend which means that they are a little bit heavier than the double faced wool coats that I have in my collection and so if you're used to that then you will probably find Reese coats to be a little bit heavy but if not this is just sort of a regular coat that you'd find on the high street. Another thing that I love about Reese coats is that they last. The next coat that I'm about to show you I've had for over six years and it's been excellent and I really love all of the sophisticated design aspects that they include. So they've got all the details, all of the things that make it look like a really elevated coat that you'd find from a contemporary label. This is the coat that sparked my love for Reese coats. This is the very first Reese coat that I ever bought. I still really love this coat. I've had it for over six years now. It is just in such good condition. I do take care of it, but I think because of the wool blend, it's made to last. The color is amazing. The style is really flattering. It just looks like a really elevated coat. This one, I remember paying almost $700 for it. And at the time it was a bit of a sting, but as I mentioned earlier, wool blend coats retain their structure. And even though this was a really expensive buy, I found this one has held up quite well. I also went to the tailor to have the sleeves taken up just so that it looks perfect on me and it was well worth it. And so taking that into account, as well as the price I paid, I really did invest a lot of money into this coat, but I'm really glad that I did. It's one of those coats that I can see myself wearing for many, many years to come and I will make sure that I take care of it so that I can do so.
And to round out the shorter jackets category, I managed to nab this Totem Annecy jacket. So I've shared with you two styles of the coat that I've had, but this is the jacket version, the shorter version. And I have this in the charcoal color. I again managed to get this second hand from Vestiaire Collective. I'm so glad that I did. It's just one of those jackets that you can throw over everything. It's that double faced wool and so it's not as structured and not as thick. I really love this one. I think that the color is amazing. And it's just one of those beautiful minimal outerwear pieces and the final category of jackets that I have to share with you are my puffer jackets and I have two in my collection the first one is this black hooded one from Everlane this is a longer cut so it keeps them really nice and toasty this one has been really great for those extremely cold days even when it's raining I sort of pop the hood on and I'm sweet and the last jacket that I have to share with you is this navy puffer jacket. Again, an amazing practical cold weather choice. This one's kept me really toasty and warm on those really cold days. And so all the pockets, all the things that you need when you're sort of out and about, running after the kids, needing to stay warm, needing to stay dry. I don't think that you can go wrong with an Everlane puffer jacket. And that's it. That's my roundup of all of the warmest jackets that I have in my wardrobe. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I will, of course, have more jacket-centric videos coming to my channel soon where I'll be sharing my blazers. I'll also do an in-depth video about my curated coats as well because I know I get a lot of questions about those. And I'll also be sharing a video shortly about how to pick the right coat for you because coats can be a little bit difficult to shop for. So that's in the work as well. If you liked this video then let me know by hitting that thumbs up button otherwise I would love it if you subscribed and hit that notification bell just so you know when I've uploaded a new video. Of course everything will be linked below. Where things have sold out I will endeavor to find a great dupe for you to get the same look and if you have any questions pop them in the comments otherwise I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!